Welcome to You Are From God, where we open the Bible and learn to see the image of God in ourselves and the people around us. I'm Scott Taylor. And I'm Tyler Hall. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome back for another episode of You Are From God. Scott, today we want to talk about something that we all experience and something that we might not think as much about on the day-to-day aspect, but what is the company that you keep, the relationships that we have in this life or some of the biggest blessings that we can possibly enjoy, certainly God-given. And we want to talk about how we make those relationships. And the fact is we're going to have lots of different types of relationships with numerous people throughout our lives. But it's pretty clear from the scriptures that some people are going to be closer than others. And uh, that's not a bad thing. That's just a matter of personalities and people coming together and having these shared experiences. I think about Jesus, Scott. Jesus in his earthly ministry had large crowds following him. Lots of people wanted to be around him. It was great. Then you get this smaller group of the 12 apostles. You see that in Mark 3 where he sets aside these 12 men to be a little bit closer. He shares things with them like the meaning of the parables uh, and teachings that he won't necessarily share with the larger group. Then you start looking in that group, and there's this kind of inner circle of three. Peter, James, and John get to do things and see things that the rest of the twelve don't. They are there when Jairus' daughter is healed. They're in the room. They're up on the mountain when Jesus is transfigured. They're the ones that are closer in the garden to Jesus. They follow him a little bit further in on the night that he's betrayed. And so you see that these men have a little bit of a closer relationship with him. Then you just look at Peter. Peter does things and says things that set him aside and apart even from those three as desiring more so to be closer with Jesus. And you get that from him just confessing that he's the Christ to, you know, walking on water and being bold enough to do that. And so you see even just in this example that there's layers um, and degrees of closeness when it comes to relationships. And, and just so we're clear, lest we think this is something unique to Jesus, David, back in 2 Samuel 23, has these mighty men of valor. And even in this group of these awesome warriors, there's this key group of 30, and then the text will specify that there's these three leaders, and then one of the leaders is kind of David's right-hand man. So whether it's because of their shared personality or friendships or just because these are the best fighters, the best captains, the strategists, there's closer relationships here. So... I think it's important to specify here at this point, Scott, that when we're saying that we're closer with some people than others, it's not a matter of being exclusive, saying, well, you're not as good of a friend to me as this other person who's in my inner circle. It's just the nature of we have limited time, we have limited resources, we want to be friendly with everyone and have those relationships, but just by the nature of some of these things, we are going to have an inner circle of people we end up spending more time and investing more in. Yeah, we can have all things in common as far as a spiritual standpoint with Jesus, but there's going to be times where uh, some of our interests are a little bit different. I, I like sports as an example, and so you're going to be spending more time with people that understand what you're talking about in many mm-hmm. cases. And, and so we all can understand, hopefully, that uh, difference that we can have with an inner circle. However... What this does mean is that from a spiritual standpoint, that it is important for us to be careful who is a part of that inner circle and in understanding what um, those people are going to bring to the table from our relationship standpoint. So, yes, it's important that, you know, you're going to talk to people that have the same interests. But the key from a godly perspective is that the interests always start with him. It always starts with the desire to uh, do what is right. And. That's why I think uh, so many passages come to mind, but certainly 1 Corinthians 15, chapter and verse 33, where Paul says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And Tyler, the reality of that verse is we're deceived. Mm-hmm. We think that we're going to be able to do something. I, I could think when I was younger in, in high school that I could go to a party and I think I'm going to convert people because, you know, I'm going to the party. I can yeah. I can uh, have an influence on them. Well, the reality is I can deceive myself into thinking that and that's going to be the bad company that's going to corrupt those morals. Mm-hmm. The other issue for us, you know, is is the fact that we've been friends for a long time. As an example, if I was friends in high school years ago with people and I can talk about they've been my friend for a long time or were they really just a friend a long time ago? Sure. And I'm continuing to have that thing because things change. Our attitudes towards one another changes and our and our belief systems in many cases can change. And it's understanding really who's going to give you the best advice, who's going to have you and in the best intentions of your of of you for you uh, in mind. 
mind and and what are you going to be able to do when it comes to your relationship with God and it reminds me a lot of Rehoboam uh second chronicles first kings talk about this second chronicles the 10th chapter in particular talk about how he went up to some of the older wiser men got some good advice but he went back and it says that he went back and he talked to people who young men who he grew up with mm-hmm. and served him and so he had this different kind of relationship with this group of people and they give him not so good advice and instead of listening to the wise counsel that he could have had and was given he listened to the fact that there was um, some younger guys that that made, just gave him some advice that perhaps he already was thinking of at the time anyway. So our inner circle is important for sure, but it's also important for us to understand what their purpose is, what they when it comes to a spiritual perspective, the wisdom that comes with them. Surrounding yourself with yes men all the time is not going to be a, a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's understanding how they are looking out for the best interest, even when it's telling you that you're wrong in situations. And Rhea Boehm had to learn that lesson. We need to learn that lesson, and we also need to understand that they absolutely can have an influence and will have an influence on us, even if it's bad or good influence. It doesn't matter. They're going to have some sort of influence on us. And that works both ways, right? Like when I'm talking about somebody being in my inner circle of a close friend group or close friends, you know, that that works the other way too. I'm a part of their inner circle. And so you think about that, I have an opportunity to influence and encourage that person. They have the same opportunity for me. But, I mean, what you said is absolutely true. Like, friendship and understanding those relationships that we have in this life do shape us in a lot of ways. And so understanding that the relationship with God needs to inform and influence all of those relationships as we're forming them. Because to your point, this is a matter of wisdom. And even with the best intentions, you're not always going to hear things that you like immediately from true friends. The Proverbs, Scott, are full of wisdom about how we make and maintain and foster relationships with each other. Proverbs 18.24, as an example, simply says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So here you kind of get the quantity versus quality conversation, and you can have as many friends as you'd like, but you find that one person or, you know, those group of people who are who are with you through life's ups and downs, through thick and thin, that's a valuable person, uh, especially when it comes to the relationships that you have with those people when we're both focused on God. Later on in Proverbs in the 27th chapter, there's actually a series of verses that talk about friendship. Proverbs 27, starting in verse 5 It says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. I mean, that's, you need to stop and think about that one, I think, a little, Scott. Not you in particular, just all of us. (laughs) But we, I mean, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Your friends might do something that might put you off or think, well, you're not for me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wounding you as a friend because enemies, they'll, I mean, this verse literally says they will kiss up to you. Right. <laughs> They're going to give you profuse kisses. Of course, yes, they will be those yes men. It's probably for ulterior motives in the context it's talking about here. So I think about 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 6 where it says, Love does not rejoice with wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. This person, a true friend, is going to tell you things even that you might not want to hear because they care about your soul. Right. They care about your eternal well-being. They care about your relationship with God. You keep reading on in Proverbs 27, picking up in verse 9, oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Somebody who really wants the best from you and is desiring to help you and see you succeed in the most important things in life. Verse 10, do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. So again, circumstances and different aspects of life might influence who we are closest to, but we can't forsake true friends when we have them just because of some of these circumstances. We have to truly see the value, whether they're near or far, appreciating the great blessing that God has put people in our lives near us and around us to truly bless us. And then the verse that many have probably heard before in Proverbs 27, jumping down to verse 17. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. This is not always going to be a comfortable thing to the points we've already made, 
there's going to be some sparks that fly when iron hits iron, but there's a sharpening. There's a process that makes us better because of that. And so these are, again, just a sample, Scott, but I think the Proverbs writer shows us through these and other writings from God's divine inspiration that we need to be mindful of how much of an impact the relationships that we are invested in are, are shaping us and how much of an opportunity we have to grow in those and to see God at work in those relationships. You know, you think about 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the verses that you brought up there with about love and, and how often we use that from a marriage standpoint. And the reality is that's just talking about people, right. brothers and sisters in Christ and how we treat one another. And another thing that you'll hear people talk about from a marriage standpoint is that it's between three. It's between God. It's between the husband and the wife. So you have this relationship piece. Well, that's also can be the case when it comes to our friendship, when mm-hmm. it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ and the attitude that we have, that as I grow closer to God, I'm going to grow closer to these people that are in my inner circle because they have the same desire to have a relationship with God. The danger is when that's not the case. And so that's where we have to be careful about where these friends are. I I truly am convinced that a lot of times people have just friends that they've just had for a long time and just don't know what to do. Mm. You know, they're just stuck in the situation. I think Facebook has played a lot into that. Sure. Their yeah. friends or acquaintances. Well, what we're talking about are people that are absolutely concerned about your spiritual health and concerned about you as a person. And to your point, being willing to say whatever it needs to be said out of love. And they're going to have that re- help that relationship that we have with God. And that's ultimately what we see in so many different places. Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, as an example, beginning in verse 9, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. And I think we understand this. It's it's a lot easier to go through struggles, we just use struggles at this point, um, with somebody else mm-hmm. than to go through them by yourself. And I think that's some of the wisdom behind why Jesus sent them out in pairs, as an example, when he sent out to the disciples. There's just a difference when you're going through something with somebody else, good or bad, that you're able to go through these various things. Now you throw on the top of that the fact that we have God with us in that relationship aspect as we've been talking about, and you just understand the center that comes around the common love that we all have for God and that relationship that we can have with Him, and we're able to go through anything. And that's the attitude that we need to have. It's not that I'm surrounding myself with people that I'm going to do whatever they tell me to do, but I know what they're wanting to tell me and what they do tell me has my best interest at heart. That doesn't mean that I need to follow them. They're so human. All right. But the reality is they're striving to help me have a relationship with God, and I'm trying to do the same for them. How much better our relationships will be as we all strive to serve our God. Yeah, that's really taking it and giving it serious consideration because you know the shared value and the shared importance with God. I think we might have talked about it recently, but Galatians 6 is just brilliant when it talks about this from, you know, there's a load and a burden. Everybody's going to have to bear their own load from Galatians uh, chapter 6 and verse 5, I believe it is. But that's, you know, there's there's burdens that we can share with one another from earlier in that passage. So the, the awesome opportunity to see what God is doing in our relationships is just wonderful, and to not take those things for granted and to not just overlook them and let them happen. So we want to leave you with this. Think about your inner circle this week. Think about the company you keep. Who are those people? And think about, are there people that I need to be drawing closer to that I have the opportunity to build relationships with? Are there people who I thought were in my inner circle and maybe aren't looking out for the best interest of my spiritual health? Give these things to God, go to him in prayer, and seriously consider the company you keep because you and those people are all from God. Thanks for listening. Show your support by leaving a review on your podcast app and share this episode with someone you want to encourage. If you have questions or would like to get in touch with us, go to youarefromgod.com. That's youarefromgod.com.